Hey, what up? It's your girl Pika. I'm over here in Singapore. It is Monday night. It's about to be midnight, actually. So Monday night, and I am here with you guys trying to make sense of today. Today's been a wild-ass day, for real. Um, started off... First of all, I was off today, so I was really, really lucky. It's been a long time, and I was super exhausted. So I got a lot of, you know, running around done today because, obviously, when I'm working, I can't do all that stuff. So I dropped baby girl off, uh, ran down to... Uh, actually, I, I did some research in, uh, in Amokyo, the hub, just to see what I could find there. And then I went down to um, Little India, but the, the shop that I was looking for uh, forward to visiting was actually closed at 10 o'clock. So I waited for a little bit, you know, walked up and down a little bit, um, enjoyed the sunshine, and then came back through that side and it was still closed. So I headed out to uh, Fair Park. I went to uh, City Square Mall this morning and kind of did some digging there as well. Y'all, Christmas is coming, and I haven't done any Christmas shopping. Like back in the day, um, there was five of us in the house, right? So what I used to do was start shopping in friggin' October and stockpile stuff in a hiding place. <laughs> and um, obviously we wait till Thanksgiving to put the tree up. And then Christmas Eve, we make cookies. I put out milk. We have <clears throat> Santa or a.k.a. Aaron Edwards come eat all the cookies and drink the milk. Um, so that Aaliyah was convinced that Santa did come through and eat everything. And then I would wrap presents Christmas Eve after everyone went to bed. And that includes, you know, no one was allowed in the room with me when I wrap presents. I love wrapping presents. Anyway, so that's just the Christmas thing. Um, I just realized I haven't done any Christmas shopping. And it's just the two of us. So, I mean, to be quite honest, I walked through, um, I think I walked through Newsstand or something today. And there was like, they were blaring like a techno version of uh, Christmas carols. And I was so not in the mood. And I was like, I'm trying to figure out why it is that I was just not feeling the Christmas spirit today. I just, I really wasn't. I don't think I'm ready for Christmas yet. I don't think I, that, that holiday has changed for me. I'm not as excited as I used to be about it. Because, I mean, as much as I want her to have a really good time, it's not the same feeling when it's just the two of us. Like, there's no excitement. There's no anticipation to go visit people, to go eat, to go cook. I mean, man, it was a big-ass shindig in my house. So... Hopefully one day I'll have more people in the house, but until then I need to kind of like suck it up and find the Christmas spirit at some point and um, do what I got to do. So, yeah, finished my errands, came back home, realized it was like one o'clock or something and I needed to go ahead and get some stuff done. I didn't cook as much as I wanted to, I did not cook. Um, I ended up sitting down to watch a movie. I was just beat, y'all. I just wanted to like veg out and not do nothing for a little bit. So I did the laundry, hung it out to dry and I sat down and watched a movie. I watched Girls Trip, which was hilarious. And I really do wonder about um, divine timing sometimes because after girls' trip, I was starting to, you know, I, under, I identified with the main character, obviously, and I was going through some stuff on my own. And at the end of the movie, I was feeling like, well, damn, you know, I know for the most part I'm mature. I know for the most part that I'm able to see things objectively enough to make rational and beneficial decisions for everyone concerned. At the end of that movie, I realized that, you know what, I hold my tongue a lot lately. And I know it's, I know when I do this, when I hold my tongue, when I don't say what I could be saying, when I don't irritate you, when I don't, you know, point out your mistakes, it's coming from a higher place. It's coming from, you know, a mentality where I feel like it's not going to do any good. It's just going to make you mad. It's going to, you know, upset you, um... It's not going to help the situation, basically. It's just going to stall the situation a little bit more because you'll be caught up in whatever I said and not whatever I did. So that's where I was before the movie. After the movie, there was a different mindset. Now, I don't know what it was about this movie or why I was meant to watch it, but I was drawn to the movie today, watched it um, all the way through, and at the end of which, I was like, you know what? I'm lying to myself. For the most part, yeah, I'm chill. I'm super chill. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to jump in anyone's face. I'm not going to start fights. I'm not like I was 20 years ago. <laughs> I think I've gotten cooler in my old age. Anyway, um, but what I did feel like was I am backtracking on some of the lessons that I've learned in previous relationships. I know for a fact that if I don't tell you something is bothering me and you continue to do it, it's not your fault. It's my fault. If I don't point out that something you do hurts my feelings, um, does not contribute to the household good, does not, you know, is not effective for all of us concerned, if I don't tell you and I notice it, it's like I saw it, I own it, right? So if I don't tell you, then that's my bad if it continues. It's my bad if something else happens. 
But what I also realize is I need to be careful and be wary and be cognizant of the fact that you're going through your own troubles. So let's say baby girl comes home, she's really upset about something that happened at school. I'm also upset about something else that happened at work and I'm trying to sort some stuff out on my phone and she's asking, you know, she's, I don't know, pulling on my arm and like whining about stuff because she hasn't figured out what it is that's bothering her yet. And if I snap at her without taking the time to figure out what it is she wants, without, you know, giving her my full attention, then I'm actually adding to her state of frustration. Me being the adult, me being the older person in the situation, I should know better. All right? At least that's how I feel. Now, I had another situation pop up today. One of my, uh, one of my fellow queens um, was hurt by a comment that someone left on her Instagram page. Now, I totally understand. There are creeps out there. There are idiots out there. There are a bunch of people with nothing else better to do than to bullshit on everyone else's parade. Seriously. So... She was ready to go off on that girl and write back to her on Instagram. But here's what I told her. And this is, for the most part, how I live my life, except for stupid mistakes I make every once in a while. Okay, so here's the deal, okay? Here's my philosophy. As a sign of maturity, this is what I've learned from observing people for a very, very long time. If one person portrays a behavior that is detrimental... When people see that, they see the bad behavior, and they classify it as bad behavior, okay? Now, if you, who are generally good, put your foot in it and tell that person off, you basically sink to their level to beat them at their own game, suddenly people see you as being the same as that person. It's almost like a fall from grace. I used to tell my, uh, my stepkids, you know, um, Aaliyah was younger than uh, Aaron, and Aaliyah used to love to just, just get Aaron in trouble. So what she would do is she'd sit there and pinch him, she'd slap him, she'd kick him, stuff like that. And her dad would not notice any of this stuff. They'd be in the car doing this, okay? Her dad wouldn't notice any of this stuff because big Aaron, you know, little Aaron, little Aaron, my stepson, would not get upset. I mean, he'd get upset, but he wasn't like, he wasn't going to whine or cry about it. He'd just, you know, grit his teeth and get mad. But where the problem changed was he sometimes, being a kid, indulged her and gave her the reaction she was looking for. And guess what happened at that point? She would cry, draw attention to the fact that he pinched or punched her back, and guess who got in trouble? So Aaron got in trouble. Aaliyah did not. Okay? So in that same vein, when someone pisses you off, yeah, okay, they piss you off. That's the best they can do at the time. They have nothing else better to do. They have no higher purpose. They haven't figured out what their, what their whole job is here on earth yet. Um, and for the most part, they're just crabby people. It's just, just like that, you know. Let them be who they are. Do not add to who they are. Because once you add to who they are, if you give them the response they're looking for, you sink down to their level, and I mean sink, you sink down to their level to try to beat them at their own own game. Number one, that gives them license to write back again, and you end up in an argument online for the whole world to see because it's in black and white. And they've engaged you somehow. They've changed your whole day, they've engaged you, and now they're showing the world that you're no better than they are. Basically, it's a tactic for people with small minds to show the world that they are important, even though they're not doing anything. So where you're actually posting and trying to lift the world up and send quotes and, you know, help people be better than they are, there are going to be those of them who have nothing better to do, can't stand you, think they're better than you, and how dare you, you know, get ahead of them or whatever, and they go do everything they can to drag you back down. It's like crabs in a barrel. No one gets out. Does that make sense? So today when I talk about maturity, I'm saying that try and come from a place of empathy. If nothing else, feel sorry for the bastard. Like apparently that's their whole job in life is to just be a nuisance. Come from a place of empathy. Come from a place of love. Anything you're doing, ask yourself, am I doing this out of love? I made a mistake today, you guys. I upset a very delicate friendship. The friendship means everything in the world to me. And push come to serve, something stupid happened, and I wasn't able to talk to the person about it because it's a very, very touchy subject. 
and I, and so I waited. Patience is the game, right? So I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited. I waited for almost 72 hours. And yeah, that's nothing considering, you know, snail mail. But 72 hours in a digital world, that's an eternity. And I'm not saying that I was justified. I'm not. I was not justified. I should have known better. I'm supposed to be the mature one. And to be quite frank, I screwed up. I sank down below where I was meant to be. I kind of reverted back to my teenage self. And I screenshotted the offense and sent it back to this person. Now, if I had said nothing, it would have been fine. What was that saying? If you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. Yeah, I should have done that, but I did not. I was foolish and I was immature today. Now, I've since apologized because this person has seen the message. He flipped out, totally upset because he was already upset. And I added, to the, I added fuel to the fire, basically. Now, I did not mean to. It was in one blink of an eye I screwed up. I did not perform that action with love in mind. I did it because I was hurt. I did not take into consideration what the other person was feeling. I was more consumed with what I was going, to, going through. And I can't be more sorry. I don't know how to explain it. See, what y'all don't understand is this is where cyberbullying has become so bad, right? People don't understand. Oh, we, you know, we had people beat us up in person. Yeah, but the way the internet works, once you drop those texts, you can't take them back. And just like, you know, when people are being bullied or emotionally abused, stuff like that, you, you create a mental reel of all the bad things those people said to you and it becomes your, your affirmations in your mind, basically. Well, guess what? It's in black and white when it's online. You can go back and read that shit over and over again. I am embarrassed and feel rather sheepish today. Because with one message, I undid like a month's worth of work, basically. It's not easy to be there for someone. It's not easy to be the shoulder for someone, to to want to be there so badly that you would give up almost anything to make sure that person knew that you were, you they matter to you. It's not easy. Long distance relationships don't do very well. I mean, yeah, obviously now it's not so bad because you don't have to wait for snail mail to get to you. You can send messages. But even then, people are becoming more and more impatient. I have people that DM me, okay, for example. They DM me and I see the DM. I know they see that I've seen it. And I left it on scene because I got other stuff to do. If you're going to just say, hey, hey, sexy, what you doing? Like, I don't have time for that shit. And rather than block you right away, I'm going to just let it wait and see how you respond. Because within like five minutes of you suddenly be like, oh, I didn't know you were like that. Ugh. You were offended. Then I know that you're, you're no good for me. I'm always up for, you know, meeting new people and networking and seeing if I can help you and you can help me. That's cool. But I'm not into this whole, you know, meet people randomly online, send, you know, ugh, offensive photos, write stupid shit, come at me like, you know, I'm a piece of meat, whatever. Like, I can hold my own, and you'll be blocked with a quickness, but I don't know who you are until you respond. In this day and age, people get pissed off if you don't write back. And I understand that. I've had those feelings too. I've kind of, kind of, I've had no choice but to move past them lately. But I'm not going to stop being who I am. I could be one of those tit for tat, butter for fat kind of people, but that's not going to get us anywhere. 
I could do unto you as you've done unto me, but that's not going to get us anywhere. I'm not built like that. That's not who I am. Because I will feel guilty for days on end if I mess with you. So it's not worth it to me. Life has changed a lot in 20 years, you guys. I remember relationships being hard, but I don't remember them being this complicated. I, I know very well that when you're in a relationship, love is a choice you make every second of every day. I choose to love you. I choose to love you. I may not like you all the time, but I choose to love you. And I've told uh, Gaia that as well. Like, She gets very upset when I get mad at her. And I'm the kind of person that when I get mad, I just need space. Just give me space. I'll come back around. I just need to work this shit out. I need to get over what it, whatever it is that's upsetting me. I need to justify it in my mind and put it away, basically. I compartmentalize, like, really well. I will never go to bed without apologizing to you. I will never left anything... When, when we're in an argument, I'm not going to leave the room or, or finish the conversation without, without ending it with, I'm sorry. Or, you know what? I had a hand in that too. It takes two hands to clap, right? So obviously if we have a problem, half of it is yours to own and half of it is mine to own. If you did something and I found offense in it, offense in it obviously then you own the action part and I own the reaction part. And today... Oh, today I fell from grace. So the only thing I can do right now, I mean, I've said my piece, I've apologized, I've made sure the other person understands that, look, I, it was a mistake. And I wasn't trying to make it worse. All I can do is wait, wait for the response, wait for them to be ready to speak to me. It's all about maturity. It's easy to poke someone back. Easy. It's hard to look at it as, okay, why did they do that? What motivated them to do that? How can I help that person? They seem to be suffering from somewhere. How do I help that person? It's hard. It's hard to put your ego aside and be like, you know what? Okay, how do I serve this situation? How do I fix it? It's freaking hard. People say I'm a martyr because I will put everybody else ahead of me. It's just the way I am. It's easier to serve. Because to be quite frank, I don't know how to love myself. <laughs> I don't know. I am my own worst critic. And that critic in there is like those, um, do you remember those Muppets that were up in the top of the balcony during the Muppets show? The two, like, it was like the two critics or whatever. That's exactly what I got running through my head. They were making fun of everything I do. They laugh at me all day long. <laughs> and I feel stupid. It's all good. I've learned to laugh at myself. But I still am not very good at loving myself. That's coming. It's on the way. I'm not perfect. It's on the way. I have a lot to learn. I know I can do better. And the fact that I actually admitted to the entire universe, or whoever's listening, whichever one's smaller, ha, no, bigger, um, I've admitted to everyone that I made a mistake today. I made a stupid, immature choice to serve my own needs instead of serve the other person. And no matter what I do, I cannot take it back. It will never be mended whole. There's a great analogy about that. If you, um, excuse me, if you take a, a porcelain plate, okay, and you smash it on the floor, it's in like, you know, a couple thousand pieces, right? Now, if you were to take all those pieces and glue them back together, is it a plate again? Or is it a catastrophe stuck together bit by bit? See, the plate, okay, is kind of like an action that is done to somebody. If you, if you hurt someone's feelings, it's like smashing a plate on the floor. And if you say sorry... It doesn't mend the plate whole again. It may put it back together, but it's not mended whole again. It's not as if it erased whatever the action was. So once you say it out loud, in person, online, wherever, you can't take it back. 
So why not operate from your highest self? Why not operate from um, a position where, you know what, I can give this my energy, but it's not going to serve that person, it's not going to serve me. It's just going to sit at a very low vibration, basically. If you were to think in that particular way, I think you would find that you make your decisions a little bit differently. Ah, maturity. I'll try again tomorrow, y'all. Shit. <laughs> but I'm hoping I didn't burn a bridge tonight. It's difficult to say when someone is suffering and you put your foot in your mouth and you make it a little bit worse without the intention of actually making it worse. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions, isn't it? Oh well, so there's nothing to do but wait it out, which I hate. I hate waiting. I mean, yes, that means I have time to do other things like um, patch up on my lectures and possibly take some notes somewhere and fill out my journal and yeah. But I can tell you right now, my mindset is not there. I'm not in the mood. So what I may do, actually, is call it a night. You guys, you've been an awesome audience. I really do thank you. Today is the 113th episode, and I couldn't be more proud or pleased to actually sit before you and talk to you about the things that go on in my life, the nuttiness that I have to put up with, and then how it is that I'm pushing through and making sure that my business is going to make it. Now, please, by all means, like share, subscribe. I am now on YouTube. No, I don't have a hundred followers yet, so I can't actually customize the YouTube channel, the link, but um, that's coming eventually. And in the meantime, you're more than welcome to s just search R-A-S-A-T-H-1 on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and I will pop up. So until tomorrow, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday, and I will catch you later. Bye.